In this video, I want to talk about what it means for a process to be stationary in mean and why we actually require that a process be stationary in mean for its inclusion in a linear regression. Well, the idea here is that mathematically we require that the expectation of our process xt is equal to some constant, which I'm going to call mu for the mean. So if I had a process which looks something like this, so my x-axis here represents time and my y-axis here represents my xt, then if I had some process which looks something like this, then it's quite obvious that this process doesn't have a constant mean. It seems to be growing over time, so we would have a violation of this above condition here under those situations. However, if I had a process which obeyed dynamics like this, so again, my y-axis is xt, my x-axis is time, and my process looks something like this, then even though the process is deviating around a sort of value, it is staying around a constant value. So it's sort of staying around a level which you could sort of think about as being the mean of the process xt. So in this second circumstance, we would actually conclude that xt was a stationary process, or at least it was stationary in mean. So why do we actually require that processes be stationary for their inclusion in linear regression? Well, the idea is, let's say I had some xt and some yt. So my y-axis here is representing both of those series, and if I had a plot of those two series. So let's say I had some yt which was nicely stationary. So it looks something like that. But then I had some xt which was obviously growing over time. So look something like that perhaps. So this purple line here is my xt and the red line here is my yt. And let's say I thought that there was some sort of linear connection between these two processes. So I thought that there was yt was equal to alpha plus beta times xt plus et. Well there's actually no way in which this sort of model can actually be satisfied when I've got yt and xt which looks something like this. If you think about it, in this sort of region here, I've got that here I've got that yt is greater than xt. So perhaps in this region that I'm going to label one here, in region one I've got that yt is equal to perhaps two times xt. Whereas in region two up here, perhaps I've got that yt is equal to half xt. So there's no way that I can have this sort of linear model where I've got a constant coefficient here be satisfied when I have one variable which is non-stationary in mean and the other variable which is stationary in mean. So that's why we require that all variables be stationary for their inclusion in linear regression. Okay, so you ask another question which is why can't I just have both my variables being non-stationary? So the idea here is that again my y-axis represents my xt and my yt and perhaps I have an xt which looks something like this. So again, it's non-linear um, or non-stationary rather. So I've got my xt as growing over time. But perhaps my yt is also non-stationary, but it's non-stationary in a slightly different form, whereas yt looks like it's growing exponentially. Again here, you can see that the gap between these two variables is changing across time. So just like the situation where I had over here, where I had one non-stationary variable and one stationary variable, there is no way that I can have a linear model satisfied, which is yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt plus et. There is no way that this can be satisfied in these conditions. So having two non-stationary variables also doesn't really help. So the idea here is that we would like two stationary variables, much like we have up here in the top right. So we have our xt on here already, which is represented by, let's say, this red line. And we have some yt, which perhaps looks something like this. And you can see that there is some sort of constant gap between these two variables. And you can sort of think about beta here uh, in our sort of linear model, where I've got yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt. The slope variable here, essentially what it's doing is it is a magnification factor from for getting from xt to yt. And you can see that in this situation, as I've drawn it up here, it is almost certainly the case that there is a constant factor which I can apply to xt in order to get my yt back. 
So those are some of the reasons for applying that our variables are stationary and mean for their inclusion in linear regression.